So I've been watching the brand new She-Hulk series over on Disney Plus with my son, and it's not amazing, but it's all right. And something I noticed, and it's been going around a lot lately, is the anti-woke just absolutely losing their collective minds. So a little bit more specifically, I noticed this happening over at the Daily Wire. The entire Daily Wire crew of people like Ben Shapiro, Matt Walsh, and their new Twitch streamer, Brett Cooper, they're all making videos and popping off about She-Hulk, how woke it is, how terrible feminism is. And as I'm watching this and seeing all of this backlash coming from them as well as people in their community, I, I wanted to discuss, are, are they ignorant? Are they just flat out lying? Is it a grift or is it all of the above? But anyways, before we dive into that, what's up? If you're new here, uh, make sure you subscribe. I love making videos about different topics, things going on in the world, but I love diving deep into these topics and discussing you know, what might be going on because I'm fascinated with human behavior. And if you are a subscriber, you're probably like, wow, Chris, this is, a, this is a little bit different than what you've been doing recently. Well, I wanted to experiment a little because those video essays, Ooh, they they take quite a long time to write and script and edit and all that. So I do want to experiment with some of these just kind of voiceover pieces with uh, stuff that's going on, a little bit more uh, brief commentary, and then save those video essays from to maybe like once a week. So I'm gonna play around with this. If you have any feedback, comments, whatever it is, just leave a comment down below. I read it all and hey, I'm here for you. All right, but again, if you're new, make sure you subscribe. You don't wanna miss any upcoming videos. So anyways, one of the things that I've noticed, especially just a lot lately, is this whole idea of, you know, I'm not a misogynist, but, or I'm not a sexist, but, or I'm not a racist, but. And this is something that I actually have, one of those bigger, longer video essays planned out for, and I think She-Hulk is a perfect example of this, right? Because what you'll see a lot during the conversation is, hey, I don't mind, I'm, I'm not a sexist, I'm not a misogynist, I'm, I'm all right with female representation. But at the same time, anytime there is a female lead, there's, there's something for them to yell and scream about. The videos that are made on this over at the Daily Wire or the many other content creators on YouTube or Twitch, they get tens of thousands or even hundreds of thousands of views, which means that there is a very large group of people who agrees with this. When they see a woman come up on the screen, they say, this is Disney or someone in Hollywood being woke and this is a problem. And I wanted to discuss that a little bit because there's some kind of cognitive dissonance going on, obviously, when people like Matt Walsh or Ben Cooper are saying that they're not misogynist or not sexist, but anytime there's female representation, they lose their mind, unless it's done in a very specific way of their choosing, because obviously in this patriarchal system, we need men to be in control and to tell everybody what is and isn't okay. So one of the first things, and I noticed this a while back, I, I, saw, I saw this compilation of comments of people freaking out over She-Hulk in the most recent episode with Meg the Stallion with the whole twerking fiasco. And what I noticed was these people are acting like this is something new. So as you can see from this, this message up on the screen, this, this person is talking about how this is something to do with the Me Too movement. And I'm like, really? Me Too happened not too long ago, within the last four or five years. So why, why would they think that She-Hulk was a creation of this? So before I even dive into the history of She-Hulk, let's go back even further, because Matt Walsh said this in his video about She-Hulk. So earlier in the month, it was announced that Warner Brothers would be shelving their new Batgirl film after having already spent $90 million to produce it. The move was devastating for Batgirl's fan, but it made sense from a financial perspective. The studio realized that the film would be a massive embarrassing flop and decided that they'd rather just take the tax write off than cut their losses. Now, of course, if they'd asked me, I could have told them before they even made the movie that a movie called Batgirl would be terrible. I mean, replacing Batman with a 97 pound female, it's like remaking Jaws 
except with a with a dolphin. Now again, I don't know if this is Matt Walsh lying or if it's part of his grift, or if you watched my recent video on strategic ignorance in which he purposely did not look this up. But as you can see, Batgirl was not just something that the woke came up with. Batgirl was first introduced to DC Comics in 1967. All right, and the first solo Batgirl comic, which arguably took a little bit of time to come out, was 22 years ago in the year 2000. So if you think about when all this anti-woke, social, anti-social justice stuff happened, which was, you know, around Trump's election in 2016, this was long after Batgirl was introduced. So for him to say this is because of woke culture makes absolutely no sense and it comes off a little bit silly. Going on to discuss She-Hulk, She-Hulk, much like Batgirl, has been around for decades. So for them to think that this had something to do with the recent Me Too movement, or they're being forced to pander, is absolutely ridiculous because this isn't new. They've been working on representation for decades. So what is it that's making people like Ben Shapiro and Matt Walsh say that this is some kind of woke pandering that's going on? But the other part of that clip from Matt Walsh that you just watched, it doesn't make sense either because he acts like She-Hulk was rushed out as soon as Batgirl was canceled because they were like, oh no, we need to fill the void with some female superhero. But it was announced that Batgirl was canceled on August 2nd. She-Hulk premiered on August 18th. So Matt Walsh must think that during that a little over two week span, they wrote, filmed, and planned out an entire season of this superhero film. And obviously that can't be the case because this series was announced a long, long time ago. So something that happened in all of their videos, Ben Shapiro, Matt Walsh, and Brett Cooper, is they reference this clip from the first episode. These shows. And so you end up with, with just purely bad dialogue like this. Like, I'm, I'm sorry, this is bad dialogue. So this is the character of She-Hulk explaining to Bruce Banner how she is really good at controlling her anger because she's a woman. Yes, see, here we go. Here's the thing, Bruce, I'm great at controlling my anger. Mm. I do it all the time. When I'm catcalled in the street, when incompetent men explain my own area of expertise to me, I do it pretty much every day because if I don't, I will get called emotional or difficult or might just literally get murdered. So I'm an expert at controlling my anger because I do it infinitely more than you. Now, I wanna make it very clear. Domestic violence against men does happen. We all know that. And I don't think any rational, honest person would ever deny that. All right, but the data is very clear of who this happens to more when it comes to severe domestic violence. But when we're talking about actually taking another person's life, they, they aren't wrong. Matt and Ben, they're not wrong about this. More men are killed each year, but Noah Sampson actually discussed this in a recent video when he made a response to Sneeko. So I'll let Noah say it a little bit better than I can. And as cringe as I think most rhetoric aimed at triggering anyone is, it also does occasionally have some benefits. Like for instance, sometimes this rhetoric will get people like Sneeko to ask questions like this. But imagine if I had a podcast called the Welcome Back to Caw, the Kill All Women podcast. Suck my boys, your content sucks. And when you ask questions like this, you get answers like this. This is data from a 2019 United Nations global study on homicide. And while the gender breakdown of homicide victims in total was strongly slanted towards men at 81% men and 19% women, as shown on the left, when it comes to gendered intimate partner homicide, this is and has always been overwhelmingly committed against women, 82% to 18%. To quote the study, these findings show that even though men are the principal victims of homicide globally, women continue to bear the heaviest burden of lethal victimization as a result of gender stereotypes and inequality. All right, so as Noah so eloquently explained, yes, more men are killed by other men than women are killed by men. But the point is 
that men are the problem. Men are the ones committing these acts of violence. So I don't necessarily think it's a very good argument to say, oh, women shouldn't complain about feeling unsafe because a man is more likely to attack another man. The issue that we're trying to point out here is that men are more likely to attack or even murder somebody. And that's an issue that we're trying to raise awareness to and trying to address. So on their end, is it ignorance? Have they just not looked at the data? And this is something that I often see from conservatives. They say things that are just so ignorant and it's not all conservatives, but especially the ones who love making money off this stuff and the culture wars, is that they completely avoid all of the data that shows how that they are wrong. Something else that I've noticed when watching people like Ben Shapiro and Matt Walsh and Brett Cooper is that they don't see that what they're, they're somewhat fighting against or saying that they're fighting against is literally the exact same thing that they're doing like this clip from Matt Walsh. The interesting thing about this claim is that it's it's not only delusional and insane, but also self-negating. She clearly has no problem complaining and is quite eager to do so. And far from being killed for it, she's instead hailed as a hero. This is a common theme with the feminists, that they claim that they're not able to talk about their troubles, when in fact, that's the only thing they ever talk about. So yes, yes, Matt, we've, we've heard this a million times. We've heard it so many times, but isn't that exactly what these right-wing, anti-woke influencers are doing all the time? Their entire shtick is, we're standing up, we're saying the things that other people are afraid to say. It's kind of like the state of comedy right now, where every comedian who gets this on the stage believes that they're saying something that nobody else was gonna say, but all of the comedy specials are exactly the same because they're all saying the same thing. And that's the same thing in this anti-woke world. They, they're, they're putting off this facade that they're doing some act of defiance, some act of bravery, but look no further than just people on the Daily Wire channel for them all to be saying the exact same thing and then the hundreds of thousands or even millions of people who are parroting everything they have to say. So thus far, I haven't talked about Brett Cooper too much. I'm actually not super familiar with her content, but I see her clips floating around and I'm probably not the best person to discuss it, to be honest, but this is something that is very, very, very common amongst the right where they get token people. They, they hold a person up and they say, see, this person of this group agrees with what we have to say. Therefore, everything we say about this group is, is the right thing. Right? So when they bring on someone like a Candace Owens, a black woman, or when they get Dave Rubin, a gay man, even though they are so against the fact that this man is married and is having a child, but that's a, that's a whole conversation for another day. But Brett Cooper, she is this young woman. She's the, the Gen Zer, she's Twitch streaming. And hey, researching this video, the girl has some charisma. But what I hope people realize and if you're a fan, okay, if for some reason you stumbled across this video and you're a fan of these people, just realize this. In Brett Cooper's video, the first thing I noticed was that she had two ads, two promotions within the first three and a half minutes of her video. Now listen, if you are very pro-capitalist and you're like, girl, make your money and you just wanna throw your money at her, that's fine, cool. But the issue that I find, and this is with influencers as a whole is, I really hope you realize that they do have a motive behind this. This is like going into a car dealership and thinking that the, the, the car salesperson is your best friend. No, there is an incentive behind their niceties. There is a motive behind why they're telling you what you want to hear. And for me personally, I don't know about you, but I hate being manipulated. And at a certain point, I have to ask, with so much being monetarily incentivized, how much do they believe what they're saying or how much are they just trying to get me in and bring me in so they can sell me something? But Brett then discusses one of the very popular conservative talking points. Emic sexism, it's the patriarchy, it's misogyny, it's all the things that are outside of their control. If you would just take some personal responsibility, have some accountability in your life, I promise you, 
things will fall into place and you will be a happier person. Have some accountability in your life. So the conversation of this neoliberal idea of personal responsibility, that whole thing of pull yourself up by your bootstraps. If anything bad happens to you, it's because you didn't work hard enough. Or if anything bad happens to you, you were walking in the, the wrong place at the wrong time. You were wearing the wrong things. Well, this is something that's known as the just world fallacy. And this is a cognitive bias that assumes that people get what they deserve, that actions will have morally fair and fitting consequences for the actor. And this, for any human that's been alive for, I don't know, maybe more than 10 years on planet Earth, you realize that this is not the way the world works. You could do all of the right things and still have bad outcomes. And as somebody who's just really interested in human behavior, I believe my theory is, and I'm sure there's research on this that I'll look into at some point, that we turn to the just world fallacy because we have this need for control. Feeling like people get what they deserve and there's some kind of karma happening in the universe that helps us feel like there's less chaos and randomness. But no, it has nothing to do with how good the person is or how hard they worked or what they were wearing when they got assaulted. It has nothing to do with that. Bad things happen to good people, and I'm sure you've seen this in your own life, really, really good things happen to bad people as well. But with the just world fallacy, you'll also notice this a lot among the re religious. And this is an easy fallback plan, right? I, I always find it interesting. I don't, I don't know if you've been watching that show, uh, Seeking Sister Wives, my girlfriend got me into it, but uh, a few of the couples, uh, no, I'd say most are very religious. And whenever something goes wrong, it's really easy to turn and just say, this is God's plan, this is God's plan, right? You can justify anything that happens in your life when it's just God's plan, right? So it's almost like falling back on the just world fallacy and it gives you this kind of idea like, okay, something better is coming if it's just in God's plan. So that's part of what Brett's saying when she's saying that we need to take some personal responsibility or hell, not even me, that women need to take some personal responsibility for what happens in their lives. Lastly, I laughed out loud at the way Ben Shapiro started his video. So this show looks just garbage. I, I will be honest with you, ever since Disney decided to unleash the fact publicly that it was trying to indoctrinate kids in LGBTQ plus minus divided by sign queer theory. When they said that, I canceled my Disney plus subscription, so I've not watched a single moment. When they said that, I canceled my Disney plus subscription, so I've not watched a single moment. Of Disney plus since then. And it's one of the reasons why we here at Daily Wire have dedicated $100 million over three years to developing children's content, because it turns out that Content for kids should basically just be content for kids. Because again, like I said, Ben Shapiro, Matt Walsh, Brett Cooper, they are just as bad, if not worse, of those who are they are claiming to be criticizing, which is the woke. Ben Shapiro believes that Hollywood and Disney Plus is indoctrinating children. And by the way, they believe indoctrination is, is showing a two second lesbian kiss from the Lightyear film. But anyways, they are really trying to promote this new thing called Daily Wire Kids that's coming out. And Ben Shapiro, everywhere he talks about it, he says that they've invested $100 million. And if you think for one minute that this isn't gonna push an ideology on kids, you are out of your mind. So although we don't have evidence of this yet, and I'm more than happy to make a follow-up video and correct myself, they're partnered with PragerU. And as many, many YouTubers have made videos on, such as Big Joel, and there is a female content creator. I recently got into her video, so I don't remember her channel. If I do, I will link it down below. But Big Joel and her and many others have made videos about PragerU indoctrinating kids, having a lot of very religious content, a lot of very like uh, the, the, the whitewashing of the American history type content. And if you think that the Daily Wire Kids is gonna be different than that, then I have a bridge to sell you. But anyways, when we're looking at Ben Shapiro and all of them even, we have to ask like, are they lying? Or is this some form of self-deception? 
is their brain having such cognitive dissonance that they do not see it? Because this is something that I always think about because I don't like to put bad intentions on people. First off, it's very, very hard to prove someone's intentions. But second off is everybody thinks that they're the hero of their own story, right? We justify our actions while we look at somebody else's and say, no, that's wrong. When I do it, it's okay, but not when they do. And this is called the attribution bias, right? So when Ben Shapiro and Daily Wire Kids comes out with PragerU style content, they're gonna believe that that's okay. But having you know a woman as a lead or having a lesbian kiss or anything in the LGBTQ area in any type of movie or TV show, that's woke, that's terrible. But when they talk about religion or they talk about you know conservative values, that's just the right thing. And I just want you to think about that because if you're new here, if you don't know me very well, I don't mind conservative uh, conservatism. I've read quite a few books by conservatives. There are a few things where I'm like, oh, okay, I can see their point and things like that. And I plan on doing uh, a video at some point about some books that I've read from conservatives because I'm a huge believer that you have to read books by people that you disagree with. But anyways, there's, there's a right way and a wrong way to do this. And I'm a very vocal critic of the left as well. But if you're somebody who has been watching The Daily Wire, I hope you realize this. I hope you could take a step back because like I said, my whole thing is I just hate being manipulated by people. I hate when people don't recognize that they're being hypocritical, you know? So I really hope that you could take a step back and realize that A, women have been in comics and TV shows for decades now. B, they're making a decent amount of money off you. C, they are using the just world fallacy like Brett Cooper when she says, take some personal responsibility. And lastly, both of these sides indoctrinate. Is it right? Is it wrong? Everybody's indoctrinating somebody because we're trying to teach kids what lessons we believe that they should learn, right? But the issue is when you take a step back and say, I'm A, not doing it, or B, uh, it's okay when I do it. That's when we run into an issue. So just recognize this stuff. And please, for the love of God, for, for the love of everything that is holy in life, lay off uh, everything is going woke. I haven't even watched the new Game of Thrones or the Lord of the Rings, but people are freaking out over black elves. Like you guys, they're freaking elves. But anyways, this video is longer than I anticipated. Uh, if Again, if you're new, make sure you leave a like, you subscribe. If you're not new, make sure you leave a like. But also, like I said, I'm gonna do some of these voiceover videos. If you liked it, if you hated it, whatever, leave a comment down below just so I know, I know what you like and I make content for you. All right, but anyways, that's all I got for this video. I'm gonna try to up the content. I really wanna go daily for at least a month just to experiment with some things now that I'm back. So uh, make sure you stay tuned. And if you wanna make sure you don't miss any of my content, because aside from YouTube videos, I also write a lot and everything like that, uh, make sure you're following me on social media at The Rewired soul over on Instagram and Twitter. All right. But anyways, have an amazing rest of your day and I'll see you next time. You next time. You next time.